Hello. So I think I've mentioned it probably in every single video since the start of the month, but uh, my birthday is coming up soon and I saved some credits, I saved some money to do a little birthday book shopping for myself. However, I'm feeling a bit under the weather recently as you guys have been keeping up with my videos. I'm going to the doctor later today to find out if I possibly have like pneumonia or bronchitis. So I don't think it'd be responsible to go in-store book shopping, but I thought we could do a little online book shopping and do a little book haul with that. So I do have some Amazon credits saved up and then I also have some money I wanna spend on book depositories. So we will be going between those sites today to look for some books and you guys can see what I choose to pick up for a birthday gift to myself. So let's get started. So there's this book, Lonely Castle in the Mirror, I think is what it's called. And I want to see if Book Depository, which edition they have for that. Was this paperback or hardcover? It is paperback. Do they not have the hardcover? I'm wondering. I usually use Book Depository on my phone, so I feel like it's hard to tell. Okay, yeah, that's a good deal. Let's add that to the cart. Continue shopping. Okay, Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura. Okay, what else did I really wanna pick up? Mr. Loverman, you can see here. These are just like wishlist items I've had on Amazon. That's why I have Amazon open right now. I need to order The Summer That Melted Everything because we're reading that next month as the Patreon buddy read. And I've really wanted to read Black Leopard, Red Wolf, even though I've started it in the past. Um, I really want Remains of the Day and Convenience Store Woman. This is not going well already because I know that I want like all of these. Okay, so on Earth we're briefly gorgeous. Let's check because, ooh, that's a, that's a cool edition I haven't seen before. Definitely add to cart. And then No Longer Human is another one that I know I really wanted. It is snowing again. I'm adding that one to the cart too. Okay, this is hard. One hardcover that I absolutely love the cover of is I Love You, But I've Chosen Darkness by Claire Bay Watkins. And first of all, I love the sound of that title. I love the cover itself, the cactus on fire. Just sounds great, but paying 20 bucks for a hardcover that you don't know if you're gonna like or not, that's something I don't love to do. Pet by Aquakia Mezzi, I'm adding that to cart right now because I know that, what is that? Cover there. I know that I want to read that and I know I want the hardcover to match my edition of Freshwater. Why is that cover, Kim Ji Young, completely different than this one? I don't understand. Let's find out. I think I'm going to add this to my cart as well because I really want to read that. Convenience Store Woman went up in price. Oh, Heaven by Mako Kawakami. I'm probably saying that right, let's see. Is it M-A-I-K or was it M-E-I? What is it? M-I-E, wow, way wrong. M-I-E. Do you guys like this cover or do you like this cover? I never know which one, but I liked this cover. So I'm just adding to the cart and I don't know because I'm not gonna like buy more than I use with my credits on Amazon. I'll buy the rest on Book Depository. Then we have Boy Parts, which I have really wanted to read for a while. Do you guys ever like go between the two sites and see whether you want to end up buying the um, US edition or the UK edition? Okay, Captain Underpants, who read that? That was 100% my job. Like, if you imagine me as a middle schooler, it was the humor of Captain Underpants. Also huge SpongeBob fan, huge Drake and Josh fan, absolutely. Drive your plow over the bones of the dead is something I've wanted to read for quite some time. I don't like that just really plain version though. I really like this version a lot. And then stay with me. This is one that I've really wanted to read too. I'm terrible. I'm just like adding everything to my cart. Um, which cover do we like best? Oh wait, so it's between this one right here and this one right here. That is the paperback. Okay, those are both paperbacks. 
Eve out of her ruins sounded so good when I heard someone talking about that the other day. I'm like, do I get that? Okay, some like female empowerment ones. We had The Power by Naomi Alderman. That one sounded really good. So did The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Um, the Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. I'm having a hard time deciding. Oh, and The Bass Rock. I feel like all of those sort of go within the same genre and themes. I know they're all gonna be like really different from one another, but I feel like they're all feminist types of stories out by, is that Ketsu, Ketsuo Kirino? The font is really little and I don't have my glasses on. I wanted to read that for a while too. Beasts of a Little Land is one that just came out recently. Let's, oh, did it even come out yet? December 7th, today is the 6th. It is not in fact out yet. It's a spectacular debut filled with great characters and heart. In 1917, deep in the snowy mountains of occupied Korea, an impoverished local hunter on the brink of starvation saves a young Japanese officer from an attacking tiger. So this encounter unfolds a saga that spans half a century. It's definitely like historical. Isn't that cover just like absolutely stunning though? But I don't know if I want to buy that. Also, The End of Loneliness is one that sounded really good recently too. But I've not heard like anybody talk about this one, which makes me a little bit more nervous. I think Real Life was one that I really wanted to read. Real Life is a novel of profound and lacerating power, a story that asks if it's ever really possible to overcome our private wounds and at what cost. So it says he's working on a biochem degree. Oh yeah, so he's black and queer, trying to escape his childhood. I think this one sounds really good. I'm gonna add this one because it just sounds like it's gonna be something that is so um, like heartbreaking. How many do we have in the cart now? We gotta figure out which site we're gonna order from. So a quickie Amezi, this Dear Synthurin is one I absolutely know I want, but once again, like kinda wanna get it on sale. Mr. Loverman, I wanna wait and read Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, even though I think I'm gonna like that. Um, what is, I think this is one that I heard Grace from GK Reads talking about. Did I add Heaven? Let's see, what's in my cart right now? Let's go to the cart. Real Life, which is the one that I just read the synopsis for. Stay with me. Do you guys want me to go over that? Let's go over that. This is also a book I heard about from Grace from GK Reads and it just sounded a very impactful. So an unforgettable story of a marriage as seen through the eyes of both husband and wife asks how much we can sacrifice for the sake of family. So this is set in Nigeria and these two characters decided like polygamy is not for them but four years into their marriage the wife cannot get pregnant she thinks she still has time but her in-laws arrive on the doorstep with a young woman they introduce as her husband's second wife so she is livid and she has to get pregnant to save their marriage is what she thinks and kind of like evaluating the cost i think that sounds so good drive your plow I can't remember, this was recommended to me when, after I said how much I loved a certain book and I can't remember which one it was. So one person in the neighborhood loves animals more than humans. Uh, their neighbor Bigfoot turns up dead. More bodies are discovered in strange circumstances. So it's like thriller and fairy tale combined, a provocative exploration of the murky borderland between sanity and madness, justice and tradition, autonomy and fate. Whom do we deem sane? It asks, who is worthy of a voice? Yes, need that, that sounds very intriguing. Why is there no synopsis for this? Okay, so this character takes explicit photographs of the average looking man she persuades to model for her. Placed on sabbatical from her dead end bar job, she's offered an ex exhibition at a fashionable London gallery. It's a pitch black comedy, both shocking and hilarious fearlessly exploring the taboo regions of sexuality and gender roles in the 21st century. I've only heard like excellent things about this. I think it's gonna be pretty hard hitting, but I've gotta go with that one too. Heaven, I cannot remember who was telling me about this one and it just sounded so good. I thought it was about bullying. It says, 
Yeah, these raw and realistic portrayals of bullying are counterbalanced by texture exposition of the philosophical and religious debates concerning violence to which the weak are subjected. If you guys know my love for a silent voice and you know how much I love themes of like suicide and bullying and children in school of that age and such. So we have to go with that one. Kim Ji Young, I've just heard really excellent things about this. It follows one woman's psychic deterioration in the face of rampant misogyny. She cares for her infant daughter, but strange symptoms appear. She begins to impersonate the voices of other women, dead and alive. As she plunges deeper into the psychosis, her concerned husband sends her to a psychiatrist. She narrates her story to the doctor, but can her psychiatrist cure her or even discover what truly ails her? A social treatise as well as a work of art. Yeah, we're gonna go with this one as well. Pet, I think is, I gotta move my feet. I can't remember if Pet is young adult or middle grade, but it says a riveting and timely young, oh, young adult debut that asks difficult questions about what choices you can make when the society around you is in denial. So there's a sequel coming out to this in 2022, as far as I'm aware. And I would really like to read that. So I need to get this one very soon. Couple more. I just want to stock up my lit, thick sec my lit thick section in my library. So that's why I'm choosing all of these for my birthday reads. So no longer human I've heard is very hard hitting, very hard to read. It's just portraying himself as a failure, the protagonist narrates a seemingly normal life even when he feels himself incapable of understanding human beings. He attempts to reconcile himself to the world around him in early childhood, continue through high school where he becomes a clown to mask his alienation, and eventually lead to a failed suicide attempt as an adult. Without sentimentality, he records the casual cruelties of life and fleeting moments of human connection and tenderness. Sounds very hard to read but very good <clears throat> i think most people have probably heard of on earth were briefly gorgeous by ocean myung who is a poet and it's a letter to his mother who cannot read i believe i've just heard about this for so long definitely gonna choose that one as well those are all the ones i've just added to my card on amazon and we'll just use my credit and then order the rest on book depository on, on book depository here I've only added the one to my cart so far. Let's read you the synopsis for Lonely Castle in the Sky by Mizuki Sujimara. Sujimara. It says, imagine the offspring of the wind up bird chronicle with the virgin suicides. How can you save your friend's life if she doesn't want to be rescued? Okay, so in Tokyo, seven teenagers wake to find their bedroom mirrors are shining. At a single touch, they are pulled from their lonely lives into a wondrous castle filled with winding stairways watchful portraits and twinkling chandeliers. In this new sanctuary, they are confronted with a set of clues leading to a hidden room where one of them will be granted a wish, but there's a catch. If they don't leave by five o'clock, they will die. As time passes, a devastating truth emerges. Only those brave enough to share their stories will be punished. Tender, playful, gripping, Lonely Castle in the Mirror is a mesmerizing tale about the importance of reaching out, confronting anxiety, and embracing human connection. It says it's a symbol of hope. So, yeah. Let's go with that too. This is translated by Philip Gabriel. Is it translated from, yeah, Japanese. Okay, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 books. That's a perfect number. 10 books for turning 30. I mean, like, it's fine, right? That's not that bad. We could have done more damage. Although I did go to the bookstore this weekend. Should I include those in my birthday haul? Let's do it. So this weekend, when I went to get actually some Christmas gifts for people, we found a new independent bookstore in a town sort of near me. And I had never seen it there before, so I'm really excited. And both of them are the same color, like the same exact color. So first I picked up, and I'm really excited because I hate just going to Barnes & Noble. Like I would like to support independent bookstores too, but I feel like I'm never able to because there aren't any nearby where I live. So I was happy to get a couple. Um, I picked up Kurt Vonnegut's book, Cat's Cradle. I don't know too much about this other than I know I've wanted to read it for a while. It is a satirical commentary on modern man and his madness. An apocalyptic tale of this planet's ultimate fate. It features a midget as a protagonist, a complete original theology created by a Calypso singer, and a vision of the future that is at once blackly fatalistic and hilariously funny. A book that left an incredible mark on the entire generation of readers. Cat's Cradle is one of the 20th century's most important works. 
we'll see. I'm excited to read it. And then I picked up this new release that I'm really excited for, and that is The Island of Missing Trees by Alif Shafak. I haven't heard of 10 minutes, 38 seconds into this strange world before, but it says a wise novel of love and grief, roots and branches, displacement and home, faith and belief, balm for our bruised times. It's just such a stunning cover, isn't it? A rich, magical new novel on belonging and identity, love and trauma, nature and renewal. Two teenagers, a Greek Cypriot and a Turkish Cypriot, meet at a taverna on the island they both call home. In the taverna, hidden beneath garlands of garlic, chili peppers, and creeping honeysuckle, Costas and Daphne grow in their forbidden love for each other. Blah, 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 blah. This is very long. A moving, beautifully written, and delicately constructed story of love, division, transcendence, history, and eco-consciousness. So I'm really excited for it. Um, it just, like, I sat there and I picked it up because it just seemed really different as I was reading this. So it says, to immigrants and exiles everywhere, the uprooted, the rerooted, the rootless, and to the trees we left behind, rooted in our memories. Anyone who hasn't been in the Chilean forest doesn't know this planet. I have come out of that landscape, that mud, that silence to roam, to go singing through the world. Pablo Neruda. It will have blood. They say blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Make that. So, I'm very curious, but very excited. So I suppose we'll include these two in my birthday book haul. And then um, let me know if you guys want to see these. Uh, actually, yes, I will try to, if they come in time for when I need to post this, there's no way they will from Book Depository. There might be an inclusion of these books physically in this book, in this video. If not, um, comment and let me know which of these books you guys have read. Which ones should I prioritize? And do you guys buy yourself books for your birthday? I would love to hear. Okay, so we're here to do a very late, very last minute haul. It is the 14th today. So the day before this video is going up, I need to edit this. But the ninth book arrived in the mail today and I said I was gonna do a book haul. The 10th one is not here from Book Depository yet and that is Boy Parts. Still waiting on that to arrive. So it's gonna be a hot second before that gets here. But nine out of the 10 arrived. So I thought we should do a quick little book haul to show you guys what I actually got. So the one that arrived today is no Longer Human by Osamu Desai, translated by Donald Keene. Also, I love this edition. I don't know if it's showing up properly on here, but it's a very, very beautiful edition. I also love that like literary fiction has just really bright, beautiful covers and spines because it's gonna look fabulous on my bookshelves and I've always wanted rainbow bookshelves, but I've always had fantasy and sci-fi and they're dark and you can't organize them by rainbow very easily since everything's black, so. Book number nine that showed up in the mail. Um, the eighth one that showed up in the mail is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga. I cannot pronounce that last name. I apologize. And she lives in Poland and I'm 50% Polish. So I like that. I'm not gonna talk about what these books are about in the synopsis since I already did that in the last clip, hopefully. So pick that one up. I also love that cover. Um, Stay With Me arrived. I really need to start doing some research on how to pronounce names because it's so embarrassing and I hate it. So I need to take the time to do that in the future. Here's a little note for future Brittany, please do that. Um, but colorful, beautiful, gorgeous, excited to read it. Also, Kim Ji Young, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju. Uh, I really like this edition the most. So I went with this one. This is such a short read. I don't think I realized it because the font is huge as well. And it's like less than 150 pages, I think. Uh, I got the hardcover for On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. This one is surprisingly longer than I anticipated it to be. So that's interesting, but this one came. Also, Real Life by Brandon Taylor. Well, that's a name I can say. Okay. <laughs> and the hardcover for Heaven by Maiko Kawakami. Maiko Kawakami. Another beautiful cover. Like, I just think this is stunning. I love this color combination of like this salmony peach color with the green. I just think it's really beautiful. I'm really looking forward to that one. Oh, another cover that I absolutely love. This is a January buddy read. 
Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura. Just, that's like such a cool cover. In another world, we were already friends, so I am no longer alone. Beautiful on the back as well. We'll be reading that very soon. And the last one that I have to haul is Pet by Akwinki Amezi. Generally, this would not be my jam, like the cover of this, but for some reason, I really enjoy this and I just want to collect all of their books in hardcover since I own Freshwater in hardcover. And the new one that I misspoke, it's actually the prequel to Pet that's coming out. I would like to have in hardcover. There's like this embossed feather. I don't know if you can really see that. I might get my shadow out of it. There we have nine of the 10 books for my birthday haul. So happy birthday to me. <laughs> I'm so annoying. So comment and tell me what's your favorite book out of this stack of books that I just hauled for my birthday. And happy birthday to all my other December babies out there. I know there's a lot of you. Um, I hope that you get to celebrate your special day separate from all the holiday festivities. And I wish you a great one. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.